So I hope within the next 15 minutes I can give you a uh, better understanding of uh, what we are doing and what, and what role we play in, um, in the global health field as funders. So I will give you a little bit of a background update on progress of our second program that started in 2014 and then our role in, in this uh, area. So we are a public-public partnership between the European and sub-Saharan African governments and are supported by the European Union. So we are a funding initiative that was established in 2003 by a co-decision of the European Parliament and Council that allows the European Union uh, to participate in research activities that are um, undertaken by several European and associated member states. Our mission overall is to reduce the poverty in sub-Saharan Africa through improved health by funding collaborative research that enhances the research capacity and accelerates the clinical development of new or improved medical interventions against poverty-related uh, diseases. <clears throat> So just to give you an overview of the countries that are actually members of EDCTP, so it's a total of 14 European countries and 16 African countries and we have two aspirant members. Our scope is, as I mentioned, to actually get products uh, on the market. Um, uh, so we focus on new and improved tools and interventions, so it covers all areas, diagnostics, drugs, vaccines, and microbicides. The diseases we cover are also, um, yeah, they include the three major diseases, HIV, TB, and malaria. And um, in the second program that was uh, started in 2014, we also included neglected infectious diseases uh, as they are um, based on the WHO list, but we exclude Chagas because it's not prevalent in sub-Saharan Africa. We also included diarrheal diseases, lower respiratory tract infections, emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases that are particularly uh, relevant for Africa, such as uh, Ebola and yellow fever. Uh, and we also um, invest quite a bit of funding and capacity development to strengthen uh, the environment in sub-Saharan Africa to actually conduct the clinical trials uh, there by African leaders. Um, I want to highlight that the majority of our funding, or right now actually all of it, uh, we implement uh, through open calls. So if you visit our webpage regularly, for example right now, we have all open calls for this year. Um, and the bulk of our funding on our portfolio is, um, are actually interventional clinical studies. Just to give you an idea how, uh, what type of grants uh, we implement uh, with our funding, th uh, the majority goes towards research and innovation actions. Uh, that's highlighted under red to your left side. These are all clinical trials that are conducted in consortia involving both European and African research teams. Um, so we require that a minimum of two European entities and one African entities participate in this consortia when they apply for a grant. Uh, we fund, pri well, we primarily fund clinical research um, and clinical trials from all the way from phase one through phase four. Right now, the majority of our funds uh, focus really on phase two and phase three. Um, we also have uh, coordination and support actions, or CSA. These are all activities that help strengthen the environment and the capacity to conduct all the clinical trials. And it includes um, supporting ethical review and regulatory capacities in sub-Saharan Africa. And our last type of uh, grants, the TMA, or Training and Mobility Actions, is uh, really on an individual basis. So these are all the fellowships that we do, um, and it covers all the range from uh, junior um, uh, career um, uh, researchers all the way to senior level, to really um, support African researchers in their own countries. So now let me give you a little bit of an overview of what we have done under the EDCTP2 program. And actually here I probably should mention our, our first uh, program that started in 2003 only covered HIV, malaria and TB. And as I mentioned only in the second program that we started in 2014, we also included the NIDs. <clears throat> so far, uh, basically what, in the last three years, we have invested uh, roughly 258 million um, and maybe I should mention for the second program, we have uh, um, a budget of roughly 683 million from the European Union and an equal amount that uh, we, we hopefully get through 
cash contribution and in kind from the European member states. So this only shows you what we have from the European Union. So we already have uh, given out 258 million euros um, in total um, over 125 projects. As I mentioned before, the majority went towards clinical studies. So we're talking about 270 million um, and supported 35 projects. Um, about 28 million went towards the capacity development. That's all, as I mentioned, around the ethical and regulatory capacity building. And um, around 12 million went to the fellowship. So that's the individual uh, participant uh, program. Just to give you an overview how, it, how this funding of um, the 200, what was it? 258 million is distributed <clears throat> and uh, as you can see by the funding amount in the middle it's uh, um, it's not all um, by the entire uh, it's not all uh, captured because some of the diseases for example they are double counted so we have not included them in these numbers so if we look by intervention um, the, well, the majority or quite a big chunk goes towards vaccines and drugs and then the red cir circle or the, the red is, um, shows you the diagnostics. The reason for that is that we had a call in um, 2014. Um, this year, as I will show you in some slides later, we just opened a call to seek uh, proposals that um, target diagnostics. So, uh, if we look at the end of our program in 2024, hopefully all these um, colors are evenly distributed between vaccines, drugs, and diagnostics. If we look at uh, the disease areas that we covered, um, it's uh, again the three major diseases, TB, HIV, and malaria, get quite a big chunk of uh, our funding. Last year, we had two calls uh, completely focusing on NIDs, but they're not included in this yet because we are right under negotiations to actually do the um, grant agreements. So the green part that covers the NID should hopefully be bigger. Also malaria, I want to uh, hi uh, highlight we have two open calls for this year, so they should also be um, getting bigger, hopefully by next year. <clears throat> Overall, um, I probably should mention that we have usually um, quite a few calls that are brought. So, for example, it would cover uh, vaccines or diagnostics, but it's not limited to specific diseases. Uh, however, we notice that usually the big three diseases win. So now, um, through our strategic reviews, we try to um, find the gaps and then have specifically target, uh, targeted calls like we had last year for the NIDs um, and this year we actually have malaria. So in 2018, so this year, if you go to our webpage, you can see the open calls for the big, the RIA, so for the big clinical studies. The deadline for submissions are at some point in October, they vary a little bit. As I mentioned, we look for proposals uh, for diagnostic tools. Um, also for uh, uh, prevention, treatment, and management of co-infections and comorbidities. So that's something where if, if uh, anybody's interested and works on NIDs, that's, for example, one area one could apply for. We exclude diagnostics in this specific call because uh, those who deal with diagnostics can obviously submit their co-infection and comorbidities under their diagnostic call. As I mentioned, we have two calls that focus on malaria. The one is on drug resistance, and the second one is on vaccine development, where we hope to actually have a comparison of current uh, va vaccine candidates um, for then for later development. And the last call we have is uh, we look for vaccines for diarrheal diseases and lower respiratory tract infections. Every year we also have calls that cover the capacity development uh, in blue and then the fellowship. So these are frequent uh, calls, so I'm not going to list them individual. So now I would like to give you a little bit of an idea what we do as a funder in global health. Even though you mentioned we are one of the biggest funders in NIDs, in the big spectrum of global health, if uh, we compare ourselves to um, 
welcome Gates and I guess even the European Commission. We, our budget is actually not that uh, big because the money I told you is over the span of 10 years. <clears throat> However, we do cover a specific niche because we in general tend to focus on underserved key populations that are often excluded in clinical trials, such as infants, newborns, uh, newborn children, adolescent and pregnant women. And I think this year the theme is actually on pediatrics, so we fit right in. We also integrate our capacity building into the grants. So whenever clinical studies are conducted, there's always money to um, support uh, ethics, the regulatory uh, side, but then also um, infrastructure building, not buildings though. We, of, uh, as I mentioned, we invest in African leadership and yeah, we strengthen the regulatory cap capabilities in multiple African countries. So I would like to give you a rough idea what and uh, how we're investing in underserved key populations. So through the end of 2017, we had a total of 12 RIAs. Those are the, the uh, calls that focus on the clinical trials. And the majority actually do target underserved populations. If not in the title, then definitely in, in the calls. For example, if you look at the second, uh, the improved treatment and clinical management of PRDs, we specifically highlight in the areas that uh, we look for for pediatric use. Um, if I mention the CHAPAS, uh, this is actually CHAPAS 4, so there's a series of one, one through three, and this is now the fourth grant that focuses on um, antiretroviral treatment specifically for infants and babies, because before that um, it wasn't really known how much you need to give babies in order to protect them then um, <coughs> from HIV infection. Um, so in every call, as I said, it's open, so pretty much everybody can submit uh, proposals that cover the pediat pediatric um, and uh, pregnant women niche. Um, yeah, these four calls I just wanted to, to highlight. We didn't have a specific call, but we always receive uh, proposals that are actually uh, selected. <clears throat> Uh, in, out of these 12 grants, I wanted to highlight that we had two uh, calls that specifically target these underserved uh, populations. Um, one was, to, um, the first one in 2016 was to support clinical trials on preventive and th therapeutic clinical interventions of post-registration products um, that then were optimized or are being optimized for uh, treatment or improved products for mothers, newborns, and children. We funded a total of seven proposals that um, besides HIV, TB, and malaria also included Chisto. Um, and then last year we had again another call that uh, targets pregnant women, newborns, and children to accelerate the adaptation and optimization of treatment and prevention products, excluding vaccines because we had a separate call for vaccines where um, we also received proposals in this area. Um, and uh, I can't list exactly who we were funding. If I remember correctly, we had actually seven that uh, um, target the underserved population. But um, as far as I know, we haven't quite signed all the grants yet. In addition, as I mentioned earlier on, and uh, we had two calls that focus on the NIDs. Uh, we, unfortunately, we didn't receive too many proposals, but uh, of, I think we received 10 or 12. However, six, so three in each call, were selected for funding, and we are currently negotiating uh, the grant agreement. And uh, they, if I remember correctly, they do cover leprosy, schisto, head, and two others where I don't think I can pronounce the names. So. Um, yeah, so this is basically to give you, um, I mean, I, I mentioned most of it, our strategy for capacity development. The goal is really to strengthen the capacity of institutions in sub-Saharan Africa to carry out their own clinical research. So we um, invest in expertise and scientific leaderships, uh, leadership, as I mentioned, through the training and mobility action calls. The infrastructure, so, so we fund uh, upgrades to clinical and laboratory facilities and other infrastructure, but we do not fund uh, the building itself. And uh, we also heavily invest in the regulatory environment to support the development of ethical, legal, and regulatory frameworks. So we do have annual calls in ethics and regulatory capacities. 
Um, th this map, just to show you, we uh, had um, four grants to support the networks of excellence. These are actually hotspots that are uh, localized in, in the four major regions of Africa to, um, to support their own networks abilities and strengthen those regional areas. Uh, so if you see at uh, Kantam 2, the, uh, the PI is in Congo, so um, she collaborates with a lot of people uh, in, in that part of Africa and also with uh, European support and the same goes for the other three uh, networks. So this is really to support all the capacity around clinical trials. And I actually want to conclude and um, uh, tell you that we also organize a forum every other year so uh, in order to increase our um, yeah, basically networks, a lot of our grantees attend and of course uh, all sorts of partners and uh, interested researchers in this area where we can all sit together and network. So this year it will be in Portugal, 17th through 21st of September and if you're interested please uh, visit our webpage.